talking to bits. Hello, my name is Doug. But we ordered a dog, not a Doug. Oh well, on tonight's show we'll be airing our dirty laundry with a new hack and slash severance. It's reap some revenge time with the awesome and overdue Shenmue. And we'll be looking at the fine art of gaming etiquette. First up though, it's boff with the very meaty Dino Crisis 2. Shut the frick up and get in your butt. Ah, oh, the grand circle of life. Isn't it great how we piss it off so dramatically? We've got the sheep to eat the cows, got the mice wearing the latest in human ear accessorising, and we're doing a great job of melting those ice caps. But we've messed up, man, and the meat's gone mucky on us. So time to dredge up a lost world and get munching on some serious flesh of Jurassic proportions for a second helping. It's Dino Crisis 2. <laughs> In the original, mad scientist Dr. Kirk unleashed a time portal of sorts which enabled dinosaurs to roam the Earth once again. This time the government have got in on the act and boom! Where a town once stood, there is now a leafy jungle infested with dinosaurs. Basically, who cares? In this sequel, the name of the game is painting the jungle an interesting shade of prehistoric. Last year, Capcom's winning formula, Resident Evil, took a detour. And riding the success of Jurassic Park, figured a few bone-crunching, merciless and fiercely fast dinosaurs could replace the groaning zombies for more action-orientated survival horror. Veterans of the series may agree that one of the main frustrations of the RE games is the control system, especially during combat, which can often leave you feeling like a stone turtle with imbalanced brain water struggling with a shopping trolley. This time, they've definitely tried to improve on this, and being able to draw your weapon and shoot whilst running about means that combat is a lot more nifty. It has to be said, the graphics are a PlayStation's wet dream, and the landscape positively oozes the dark, dank depths of Jurassic Jungle so much you can practically smell the pungent stench of dino dung. Though the game feels a little repressed due to the lack of any real-time camera, and the pre-rendered backgrounds means running through each screen takes more time, the overall looks make up for these drawbacks. The actual dinosaurs themselves are brilliantly animated with exceptionally smooth moves, especially the definitive T-Rex which, in true Hollywood style, shakes the screen and rumbles your jewel shock with every ominous step he takes. Dino Crisis 2 is a pleasure to play, even if I did feel a little guilty about blowing up such beautiful, beautiful beasts. Well, what can I say? I'm like the only person I know who cried when Jaws died. <laughs> no! <laughs> now, bringing out a title exclusively on PC is the equivalent of a pop combo bringing out a vinyl-only album and expecting it to go top ten. Well, a couple of weeks back, a title unique to the PC shot in at the number two slot in the all-format charts. What button-bashing phenomenon is it part of? Well, you guessed it, the footy sim. Mm, and the game in question is Championship Manager 2000-2001. Championship Manager, the perfect marriage of two old-school schoolboy love affairs, the football sticker album and the flickety kickety wobbly wobbly world of Sabutio. Sabuto what? Sabutio, we're letting our wee Scotty Duck out of his kennels to tell you his ideas on the hands-on past and the virtual future of the beautiful game, football. I'm a modern man. Let's say a new millennium kind of guy. And while I fully embrace the latest computer technology, I can't help but feel that the simulation of football has never been bettered than by the pleasure mountain we know only as Sabutio. Two players eyeball to eyeball around a table of dreams, a theatre of drama played out on a smooth velveteen pitch. In order to understand it fully, however, we need to break it down. Anyone can play in your team, and your team can play anyone. For example, I have Pelé, a genius, Maradona, a maverick, Trevor Brooking, Trevor Brooking. The power of the human voice should never be underestimated. For example, you can add your own commentary. You've got to say, 
that was just absolutely sensational. The pass, the shot, mm -hmm. and the goal. Now somebody get me a brandy. I'm feeling a bit giddy. I've always found Tracing computer well commentary there. a bit sterile, lacking passion. And you can tell by the look on the keeper's face how close that was. There's also the social aspect, facing one another, staring into each other's eyes, but never falling in love. Oh. Of course you can enjoy football via your computer. The merits of games ranging from sensible soccer to championship manager have been well documented. But I ask you, where's the hands-on approach? The blood, the sweat, the smell, the fears, and the scars. I'll tell you, they're all round at Uncle Subutio's house. In fact, if I could analogise just for a second, why watch someone having fun on a trampoline when you can bounce yourself? Um, yeah, thanks, Doug. And next up is Emily with a video game. Ew. Take four oddball warriors on a fantasy quest, stick them in a tumble dryer, and what do you get? A bloody mess. And a game appropriately named Severance. Now, just as the Americans are setting up to put age classification on arcade games, the Codemasters are previewing this super violent hack and slash. Oh. Naturally, there's a backstory featuring a powerful dragon. Once badly beaten, now intent on revenge. Conveniently, there's also a dragon slaying sword. Unfortunately, it's locked in a tomb of a past hero. You'll have to find five keys before you can get at it. How tiresome. You join the game when it's all going off. The dragon is about to recover its health and there's an evil wizard also after this lovely weapon so he can gain command of the dragon. You get the choice of starting the game either as a barbarian, dwarf, knight or amazon. Each fantasy avenger has their own strengths and preferred weapon, with plenty more to kill for. Fear not if you find yourself sans weapons, as there are plenty of objects lying around the scenery that you can pick up to fight with, from torches to tables and chairs to the dismembered limbs of fallen foes. Bloody very nice. Hopefully you'll be able to pick up a severed head or two and use it for a nice game of pétanque. The single player will develop through an immersive plot, each character beginning in a different way. But the online multiplayer options are also looking good, particularly as Severance 2 is already in production with a focus firmly on the multiplayer action. Currently, one-on-one -on -one battles use preset combos, beginning with the basics and becoming more complicated as your character builds experience. To help you along, there's also a force bar that measures your hit. Hold it down and you'll slash harder. So far, it's looking bloody good, with overtones of the never-release super-violent thrill kill. Severance releases over here on December 1st. Time now for our top five. Whether all those facelifts and fast cars have broken the bank, or those fickle little fellows of the movie industry genuinely want many fingers in many pies, it's amazing where they can end up. Yep. With video gaming getting trendier by the millimute, B-list and a few A-list celebs are getting in on the act and donning virtual skins to secure their places in the adolescent bedroom. Bits has gone to the movies. Here's our top five celebrity cameo appearances in video games. Mr. President. At number five is this dodgy looking number whose cheap shot on video looks make it seem like it's about to break into porn at any second. It's not. This is Command and Conquer Red Alert 2, and the opening trailer stars none other than Ray Wise, most famous for his disturbing role as Leland Palmer, Laura Palmer's dad in Twin Peaks. We're laughing at you, Red! At number four are glam rockers KISS, appearing in their own game, KISS Psycho Circus. The high commandos of camp are back. Gene Simmons and his tongue wrap up in leather to take on various warped circus freaks. Kind of like a family reunion then. The show. Kiss. Psycho. Circus. Armies on the march. The world divided. The threat of attack from the land, the sea, and the air. No Sunday roast this week. It is, of course, toilet TV icon Rick Mayo, coming in at number three in Hogs of War. Now, admittedly, he's not actually in this, but it's his infectious voice that we all know and adore. 
Do you in love, Private? The survival of your soul is at stake. From outer space to drum and bass, this man has always been at the heart of innovation. Now he's embraced the world of CGI and video gaming in Nomad Soul. It's the enchanting, ethereal David Bowie. Wifey Iman also takes a break from knocking back a certain brand of coffee liqueur to have a go at virtuality. What a groovy couple. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you, Iman. But at number one is the plastic, fantastic Space Channel 5. And guess who was queuing up outside, gagging to get in with Ulala and her kitschy booty shaking butt? None other than the ultra famous and some might say ultra weird Michael Jackson. Our top 50 games of all time chart has continued to snowball with 258 games being nominated thus far. But it's a slippery, slippery slope for what was until very recently the reigning champion, a game called Elite. Yep, Final Fantasy VII has usurped the top slot and dumped poor old Elite into number two. If you want to find out how the creators feel about being demoted by a role-playing game, or indeed why they allegedly fell out so badly they cannot even stand to be in the same room as each other, then send us your questions for Ian Bell and David Braben, and we shall publish the very exclusive interview on our website soon. If you want to have a say in what game throughout digital history is the canine's codpiece, then get your fingers a tapping and hit our website at www.forlater.com forward slash bits. And in other feedback news, Geekwatch is closing its inbox. No more entries will be considered. Full stop. Now it's time for you to take the bull by the horns and change the course of Bits action by voting for your number one geek in the UK today. So get your pimply, sun bleach, blistered buttocks over to our Geek Watch page on our website and cast your votes from the ballot that we have posted there. Let's take a look at some of this week's beauties. Oh, Daniel Johnson. What a lovely, um, hat. We're looking for geeks, not freaks, Fire Clown. Well, hey, another lady geek, Elsa, a.k.a. Queen Ass Bitch. And Cookie here likes nothing better than a night of psychedelia and PVC. Ew. And if you mosey on down to our Geek Watch page, then you can check out our Geek Gallery, filled with the sorry, sorry souls who didn't quite make it to the final run of our world of video gaming. These demi-geeks will not win the prize, but the dude or dudette whom you, Joe Public, vote for will win a state-of-the-art gaming PC. Ooh. Ooh. Join us off the brief for a roll and large helping of this. Get up. I'll allow you to die like a warrior. Mm. Hello and welcome back to Bits. Coming up, we'll be taking a look at what you should be spending your hard-earned cash on in this week's Shop Shelf. And we give you the do's and don'ts in our lesson on video gaming etiquette. But first, Alex takes a long, hard look at the gorge Shenmue. The 80s was an era of fashion victims and personal vendettas. If you weren't a leg warmer casualty, then you were probably wearing stonewashed jeans and a leather jacket, being a punk and searching for ways to avenge your father's death. Now, documenting that strange decade of marching powder-fueled revenge and aggression is a phenomenal new game that's ushering in a whole new sensation. It's called Shenmue. Shenmue follows Ariel, a young 80s guy, as he pursues the bad man who knocked his kung fu paw sideways for an ornamental mirror. He's seeking the why behind his sudden orphanship. He's seeking revenge. No turning the other cheek here. This soul, lost somewhere between Pob and the sensitive New Age reformation of the 90s, is seeing red. Father! No! And it ain't the rouge and the new romantics. Prepare to die. <laughs> Rio's blood isn't particularly boiling, nor is it very well translated, but deep inside is a lean, blue jeaned killing machine, ready and willing to pop a punk ass horse head into his newfound enemy's bed. 
Oh, the horror that lies within this mild-mannered boy. Welcome to Telly Time, Western Australia. On the third stroke, the time will be 9.40 and 50 seconds. The game is structured around his waking moments, from 8.30 a.m. until the witching hour of 11.30, leaving Sorry. no time for piss nights out and moose women. You direct Rio through every slightly enhanced minute of these 15 hours, where one day in the game takes about an hour to complete in the real world. Hey. Hey, mister! Let's play soccer! Some other time, okay? Getting through the objectives in time is just like work, including the limitations of office hours, opening times, lunch meetings, and the curfew. There you go! Milk's perfect for a schoolboy, I'd say! <laughs> Are those guys sailors? Maybe. I'm looking for sailors who work with Chinese ships. What are you, some kind of TV detective or something? Back off! You little punk! You looking for some of this? There's a notebook that you carry around with you which contains all the clues imparted by the 500 or so discreet and occasionally Stepford characters that wander around. This is very important, especially if the last time you played you were completely wrecked. Now, it contains useful clues like things like sailors hang out in bars at night. But not to dissuade any uptight gamers, this does prove extremely useful later on in the game. You seem troubled. I am. Shall I read your fortune then? The plot drives from one question to the next, and Rio repeats himself verbatim to hundreds of atmospheric characters until the problem's sorted out. It can become repetitive, but the developers cleverly distract by introducing another environment in which to begin the carrot dangling again. The controls are the only things that annoy in this almost perfect game. Rio can only move in a direction if he's facing it. Much wasted energy is spent getting him in a place or turning him around. Boring. And we were promised full Virtua Fighter style fisticuffs. Although he practices kicking and flailing and learns new moves to a certain extent, when it comes to being attacked by brutes dressed in leather, a portion of the fighting is reduced to quick response knowledge of where A or B is. So, do you know Charlie? I... I don't know any Charlie! Where'd you get the tattoo? Okinawa! I'm not lying, but there's a tattoo parlor in Yokosuka too. A friend told me about it. You've got to believe me. There's no corporate takeovers, there's no Charlie, there's no war in the Middle East, nor is there a lick of blue eyeshadow. But what there is, is a hermetically sealed plot and an angry young man who never changes his pants, never suffers from bedhead, and says, I see a lot. Now, you'll be able to live this alternative reality on your Dreamcast from the 1st of December because you won't be able to live without it. On the third stroke, the time will be 9.45. Time now to take a rational look at this week's best buys on the shop shelf. First came Pack Love, then came Pack Marriage, and then Baby Pac Man in the Baby Carriage. Then came the Feminist Revolution, and Ms. Pac Man busted the original yellow arcade disc balls off. Ouch. Riding the wave of Big Brother's success, now even Darren's favourite bird of the bunch has got her 15 minutes of fame. Revenge of Marjorie the Chicken is the ultimate chick hunting game. Load your shotgun and go bird shooting, or become Marjorie herself and take revenge on mankind. Yep, Tanner is back with the second in the award-winning 70s movie reminiscing Huggy Bear promoting series Driver. Number two sees his ass traveling from car to car, dynamic city to dynamic city, in what's this? A plot-driven drive em up Mario Tennis has hit the courts for smashing Nintendo Tennis action. There are hidden characters to be uncovered and different modes to choose from. Have a foursome with your friends, or simply choose one of your favorite Nintendo characters and play away. <laughs> This is number two for Little Link on the 64-bit Nintendo console. It's the time-hungry Zelda Majora's Mask. Adopt superhero powers by donning an old wooden mask a la Jim Carrey and bust some action-adventure butt. Mm, mm, mm. 
Lack of gaming etiquette will not win you any friends, nor will it influence anyone. So with that in mind and your best social interests at heart, we've devised this absolutely essential and imperative guide to button bashing etiquette. First up, don't be smug. Now you may well be the only person who has finished the only available copy of the game, to those who really care. However, this is no reason to be smug or arrogant. Ah, bitch keeps drowning! Where's that bloody air hole? Oh, God, are you only there? I found that so easy. It's really easy to find. But you know, the next level is really hard. Do not gloat, chuckle, or even guffaw. In fact, leave the room if you feel so much as a titter escaping your throat. There is nothing more annoying than a twat sitting next to you with a cat that got the cream smile. Next up is a most annoying habit. Backseat gaming. The nature of this category of bad etiquette reveals itself when a self-satisfied, overexcited so-and-so gets bored with watching your inexperienced and ineffectual navigations around a level and starts telling you what to do, where to go, and when you're about to commit a wrong move. Oh, left, left, left. No, go right, go right, jump. Oh, you need to jump here. Run, run. He's behind you now. Shoot, shoot. Oh, you need to shoot, shoot. Even more serious in the bad manner stakes is this oblivious gamer's negligence. We be walkers. There you are, you're making that pivotal jump, that crucial turn. The save point is just within your grasp and... No! This is simply not acceptable. However, the rules changed when the following affront is committed. Hogging! You get the hottest game in town, on input, before the rest of the world has banged their bucks down. So, you invite your equally excited pal round for beer and popcorn and then find you can't get your hands on the controller because your so-called friend has suddenly got a serious case of sticky mitts. No, no, one minute, one minute, I'm almost done, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. A thwack over the knuckles and Tamazapam spiked tea doesn't do anything to dissuade your ex-friend, then you may have to resort to the harshest gaming transgression of them all. Unplug it. Your mama's dirty trick of plugging in the Hoover to the self-same slot that you use to power up your machine is the most heinous crime against video gaming. I mean, really, how could they? Try flummoxing would-be electricity usurpers by planting decoy plugs for them to pull. Once you see them going at it, simply quick save and rest assured that all your efforts won't have been in vain. However, there is very little you can do if your dopey and flaky flatmate once again forgot to recharge the electricity meter. Oh, Alex. Time now for the competition. So, Boof, what's on offer tonight then? Well, Alex, tonight we've got five webcams up for grabs, courtesy of Gameplay. And all you've got to do is answer this very strange question, which we made up months and months ago while under the influence of legal drugs. Stephen Hawking's Melinda Messenger and Alex are all aboard an aeroplane preparing for a crash landing. No, this is not the start of a bad taste joke, <laughs> but rather the opening scene from a video game that we started writing one night but couldn't be asked to finish. Your task is to map out a rough storyline and a mission objective and come up with a title. <clears throat> Interesting, yes. Yeah, send your answers in via our website at www.4h.com forward slash bits. Yo, cows.